And what is type 1 diabetes? The, the basic way to understand it is that it's a metabolic disease that results when our bodies can't produce enough of a specific hormone called insulin. And then uh, a person uh, needs to take insulin uh, basically for their entire life. So you can imagine um, the devastating impact that must have. It predominantly affects children, uh, it affects adolescents as well, but we're seeing more and more cases of young adults and, and even older adults that are being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Hi, my name is Hayden Glitz and I am 8 years old. What's it like having type 1 diabetes every day? Mm -hmm. Sucks. I have to get finger pricks like twice a day. I have to get my pump changed every three days and my Dexcom changed every week. Does that just get annoying? It starts hurting. Oh, it's it's hurting. It's annoying and it hurts. Mhm. Mm what hurts? Uh, the needle getting into my skin. The Dexcom. Um, that's that that feels really weird after you put it on hurts really bad and my my deck I mean my pump it, this has a tube that just shoots right into my skin so that one hurts the most do you um do you, you think we're gonna find do you think we're gonna find a cure for type 1 diabetes mm, I don't think I'll be around though why not mm, I don't know I've been trying to find a cure for over 30 years is that about right? About 30 years? Oh, the day of a life. And the mom of a type 1 diabetic, um, it's always on my mind. So the first thing I do as soon as I open my eyes is I look over at my phone where I can see his numbers because I have his blood sugar um, numbers on my phone that are hooked up to. He has a thing called a Dexcom that will send every five minutes an update of what his blood sugar is. So as soon as I wake up, I look at my phone and see where he's at. And so from that point on, my first decision is, okay, is his number okay and I need to go treat him? Can he sleep a little bit longer? What do I need to do? And then everything kind of goes from there. It's just, there's no pure relaxation. There's not even pure sleep. Even I, I sleep with one eye open because my alarm goes off all night where he's high or he's low or you, you just worry. You know, if I wake up, you know, turn over in bed, I look over at my phone because I'm like, oh, let me check what he's at right now. Um, so emotionally, <laughs> I'm exhausted. Every year for his birthday and Christmas, we ask him what he wants. And the first thing he asks for is a cure for diabetes. And then he always asks, am I gonna have this forever? And I try to say, you know, I think we're gonna find a cure. And I, I, I don't believe that you are gonna have this forever, but I can't promise him. And I know he wants that promise. But I tell him that we're going to do everything we can to make sure that they're going to find one one day. Every bit of study and, and research that goes into this is getting closer. And by not doing it, we're not going to get there. We have to keep pushing. I think a cure is going to come from some smart scientist that has an idea that maybe people weren't betting on or it's something they haven't heard of, but we need all avenues pursued because that's how something's going to get found and if nothing's ever funded or given a chance it could be right there and we would never know. We've got to find a bona fide cure and what's exciting about what Diabetes Research Connection does is to explore out-of-the-box ideas about not just ways in which to cure it but try to figure out what's causing it to try to prevent it and then there is also research that we're doing to help with the complications. I cannot say that we will intensify our efforts because we are putting the maximum that we have. But I think that people with type 1 diabetes will be so bright one day. It's a progression and, and it takes, you know, one step at a time for us to, to move forward. You know, the discoveries that we make today are built on the knowledge that we had decades ago. And so there, there has to be kind of a, an understanding that research takes time, it's a progression, um, but we are making enormous strides on many different fronts. You know, if we, if we want to get to the point where um, we have 
a, a, you know, a whole sort of host of, of different approaches and, and options for, for treating and curing and preventing uh, type 1 diabetes and, and, and its complications, we really need to invest in research now. It takes a community to connect for a cure. It takes a community to connect for a cure. We believe it takes a community to connect for a cure. I believe it takes a community to connect for a cure for type 1 diabetes. And coming together, that's the way that we're going to make a difference.